building a deck and I'm showing you how to do it too. This is day 11. Last week I laid the landscaping fabric and added in some slabs to hold it down and to hide them. Today I'm going to be adding the joists and the noggins. What are noggins? I can hear you asking. They're the little pieces of wood that go in between the joists. All will become clear. It's recommended that joists are placed no more than 40 centimetres apart. I'm going to divide the length of the deck into equal parts and as long as those parts are lesser than 40 centimetres, that's where I'm going to put my joists. From memory, I think it was about 36 centimetres would allow for me to place joists at equal distances apart. I realised that I would need five lengths of wood. Because I don't have a calculator on me and my maths is not that great, I just kind of folded the tape measure into five sections to see how far apart they needed to be. I could have just got a calculator, it would have been loads easier than messing around, but I was determined not to go inside. And because I tried to measure it in a slightly silly way, the measurements that I originally had weren't correct, so I marked it every 38 centimetres or something like that, and it wasn't the correct measurement, so I had to go back and work it out again and measure it again. I think I marked it about three times. I measured the correct markings out on both sides where the wood needed to be drawn in and then I got out my set square so I could draw a more robust line on the wood. I didn't want to get it mixed up because there's obviously loads of marks on the wood where I've previously marked it that was incorrect. So I wanted to mark it so they were like the real lines. You know the first time you do it you're like oh those are the real lines and then you realise that they're a mistake so you do like the real real lines and then I did the real 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 lines and I had to mark them in heavier pencil so that I knew they were the real 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 lines. Does this make any sense? Here I was just double checking the width of the wood at various different points of the square because even though I've designed this to be a square it may not be the same measurement the entire way through and if I cut five pieces that are all the same length I want to make sure that I'm cutting them all of the correct length. As it happens, the measurements were out by just a few millimetres and so when I came to cut the five lengths of wood I kept that in mind and I cut one or two pieces just ever so slightly longer so they would wedge in there. I don't want there to be a gap between the joist and the surrounds. This was me with the set square drawing the real 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 lines in and it's worth sharing that I'm drawing the lines uh, where we'll be in the middle of the joists so I'll be centering the very centre of my joist into the middle of the line. I then took all five pieces of wood inside to my mitre saw. My mitre saw is a recent addition to my collection. It's my most recent tool that I've bought and it's wonderful. I don't know what I did without it. Obviously you make do with whatever tools you have. You always find a way, but it's so convenient, more so convenient than a circular saw. Because a couple of the pieces I had shaved ever so slightly longer, and ever so slightly shorter, I had to work out roughly where this one would fit. Turns out this was one that was ever so slightly longer and it squeezed in wonderfully to this little gap. It was such a good fit in fact that I had to use my hammer just to persuade it to fit more accurately. Oh here we go, got a little close-up of the tappy tap. Just a little bit this way, oh that was too far, a little bit back. As well as making sure it is flush with the line, I also want to make sure that it's standing up straight and not wonky. There we go, that's the real, real, real line. Then we're going to have a little look at the other side. There it is. You can see a couple of the real lines and the real, real lines. Something also worth mentioning is that when I measured the distance in between the two beams, I measured from the centre of the beams. That way, when I put these joists in, they'll be an equal distance apart. If I'd have measured from the very edges, that wouldn't have been a problem. I just wouldn't have lined up these joists with the very centre of the line because that would have been off. I'm not convinced that I've explained that particularly well, but I'm looking to just get an equal distance in between them. And since the central joists are being measured from the middle, I do that with the external beams as well. I was feeling unhappy with how this beam was lying against the post. It just wasn't flush. This was that warped piece that I tried to straighten out before. Someone in one of the previous videos recommended instead of using the screws as I did to try and clamp these two pieces together and make them more secure, I could have clamped the piece of wood where the screws were and then used a second clamp to try and tighten the pieces of wood. 
here I was just looking to make it a bit more snug. I took out the original screws that I'd used because I wanted to put in some slightly more heavy duty, some longer screws that were going to go deeper into the adjoining wood. I'm unsure about my success. Maybe you can tell me. Does it look like the wood is closer? As many of you will know if you've been watching this series throughout, I'm also recording some short form content because I'm super lucky to be working on this project with a brand that I really like. Partnering with brands on content is the main way that I make money for my business, which allows me to continue to make content for free for everybody. So it's always such a wonderful thing that I can work with brands on content. What you're seeing here is me developing part of this project, but you're also watching me develop the content, trying to find the right angles, trying to film the bits that I think will be interesting. And this particular shot is in the final video because it was published today. So if you want to go and watch that video and see if you can see that shot that I've just created there, I will add a link for you in the description. It's amazingly helpful when people like and share and comment on my sponsored vids because other people see them and it lets the brand know that everyone's interested in what they're doing. And I suspect that it's a brand that you already know and love, so do go and check it out. Whilst I was installing the rest of these joists, I did notice one particularly tricky bit that I was going to have to solve. Because this deck is butted up directly against the wall, I'm not able to come in from this side to drill into these pieces of wood. So instead, I'm going to come in from an angle here. Now, it can be really difficult to drill into a piece of wood like this at an angle. Almost as difficult, in fact, as it is for me to film with one hand whilst also trying to hold a drill and screw. Oh, we're back. The best way to do this is to drill it in, as I have done here, a tiny little bit when it's straight. And then that will allow you to come back around at an angle and screw it into the wood. If you tried to get that angle from the start, it would be really challenging to do. Not impossible, just harder than it needs to be. Before I completely put this piece in, I screwed in the other side because I don't want the wood to move. When I did the first joist to the left, I realised that it did move a little bit if I screwed one screw in the whole way. Ah, oh, here's the bit that I thought I did before. I'm screwing some longer screws directly into the large post. This was yet another way to try and get rid of some of that gap in between this beam and the corner post. Once I'd done that first one, I realised I kind of wanted to use these longer screws on all of the posts. I want these corners to be more secure. The ones that I used before were decking screws, so they are fine but quite short and not really designed for this. I mean the decking screws, so they're designed for the deck, for the actual wood on the top of the deck. I had a few extra breeze blocks and I wanted to put this underneath the deck to add as a kind of extra support. The hot tub is super heavy and as I looked at the deck I thought perhaps the pieces of wood that I used were quite narrow. I'm going to do a couple of things to solve this. One is the breeze blocks. I'm going to stick these underneath wherever they naturally fit because I don't want to have a bowl. I don't want to raise the deck in just one little area. So I tried for a little while to find a good space where they would just naturally um, help support the deck. And in a later video, I'm going to show you the other thing that I did to try and improve the strength of the deck. But as I promised, it's now time to talk about noggins. It sounds like I've made it up. It doesn't sound like a real word, but it is. That's what these are called. These go in between the joists and give it extra support. The noggins should be placed no more than 120 centimetres apart. Depending on what you look up, quite often places will suggest having them as close as 40 centimetres. The internal space in my deck is about 180 centimetres, so I'm going to add two. Something important to know about adding noggins is that you should add them in slightly offset, so not in exactly the same place between every joist. And this is because it makes it easier to screw them into place because you can access the wood behind the noggin. And there was me setting up my phone for the short form content. It's attached to this chair. And the reason for that is because I bought my current tripod at a certain price and the price has now gone up on Amazon. And psychologically, I can't bring myself to pay more for a product that cost me less previously. So even though I need to, I desperately need to, I'm too stubborn to buy it more expensive. I just, I can't, I can't do it. 
I positioned these two noggins in place but hadn't yet screwed them in. That is what I'm doing now. I've just come in from the sides and added two screws, making sure that it's flat to the top. You don't want to have any bits of the wood rising above the joist because when you put your decking board down, it's going to be too proud. It's going to be too high and you'll have like a little, like a little raised bit in your deck and you don't want that. Apart from the fact that it will look a little bit weird, the water won't run off of it correctly. After doing those two, I did a little bit of watchy watchy because it was really tiring. And I've come in for a close up for you so you can see exactly what I was talking about when placing the noggins. So these are offset, they're not directly behind the ones that I've just done. I can access these now with my drill. Oh, by the way, to also make my job easier, I drilled some pilot holes, which is what I'm doing now. I don't recall if I explained pilot holes in a previous video. I guess twice is better than not at all. So doing the pilot holes with this twist drill bit or a wood drill bit, it just takes out a little bit of the wooden material from inside of the wood. So when your screw goes in there, it doesn't have to fight for space and it means that the wood is less likely to crack, less likely to split, especially at the ends. This happens a lot at the ends of wood when you are screwing in. So I've done a few noggins and I've completely run out of steam for today. But before I go, I'm going to show you this amazing hack that I think is super helpful when you're joining pieces of wood together. This piece of wood was too low down and it was hard to raise it up by hand. This just happens sometimes. If you screw in a screw and you use a hammer, you can gently pull it up so that it's flush. You can use your hands as well, but sometimes it's just really tough in there. And this just makes really light work of it. Once you've got it in the right position, you can use your screw to drive it into the wood. <laughs> you see the camera then just had a little wiggle. And then you just take the screw out and it's fine. I'm never one to miss an opportunity, so I even created this short form video. I posted it onto all of my socials last week. It was very popular. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel.